Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. I'm in the backyard, or the house, in the catio. You can kind of see the netting here, the, the, I don't know if it's chicken wire or whatever that is, but it's a type of fencing, and it keeps the critters out, especially uh, skunks and raccoons. So far, so good. The other night I saw actually a raccoon go through. I have a, a camera here, I call it my critter cam. It's really for the birds, but it does get some of the deck here. And a raccoon went by just about 30 minutes before I took my dog out for Snickers. That would have been a bad moment, don't you think? I think so. Well, anyway, I'm back. I didn't have a Friday reflection last week because I was on vacation. And you might ask, where did I go? I went nowhere, actually. I was doing a staycation. Had various things I needed to do, uh, take care of. And uh, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. I like to just relax. You might notice that there is a little bit of difference here. I decided to begin my summer wear by starting in spring by shaving, and there you go. Well, this weekend, we're going to hear this story that ends from the uh, what's called the journey or the road to Emmaus, and the last part of where Jesus, right before his ascension, occurs. But I want to key you into uh, one thing to know about, and because I want to make this short, because I want to prep you to think about what this means for you, because it's important. And I mentioned this in the Wednesday, I'm recording this on Wednesday, the Wednesday morning mass, that when you hear the scriptures proclaimed at mass, think about a phrase or be aware of a phrase or a word that jumps out to you, because it's the living word of God. And that living word then allows us to grasp something about what God wants us to know or to hear. And it may be something that's directly related to that text. And it could be something that is on your heart and on your mind. And you're just wondering, you know, what, what to do, and, and that comes to you because of the living Word of God. So here we are. This is in the Gospel of Luke. And in the book, the text about the road to Emmaus, this is uh, chapter 24, as I mentioned, Jesus encounters two of the disciples going away from Jerusalem because that's where Jesus is going to be. So they're actually going in the wrong direction. That's not good. But nonetheless, Jesus accompanies them, and as he does so, he is shrouded from them. They don't quite see well. He asks, well, what are you doing? What's going on? And they responded, you know, don't you know what happened in Jerusalem about how Jesus did these things? He suffered death, and we were told he'd rise on the third day, or this is the third day, and basically they hadn't seen anything. So they were leaving. And so Jesus then, it looks like he's about to part from them, but they're going to stay in Emmaus or at least near Emmaus, and they invite him to stay with him. And so they break bread together. And in that breaking of the bread, their eyes are opened. And we hear this. He says, oh, how, this is a verse 25. He says, oh, oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. And they then came near a village to which they're going, that'd be Emmaus. He walked ahead as if he, they were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and day is nearly over. So he went and stayed with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And this is the part I want you to think about. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Okay, so that's, that's verses uh, like, oh, I say 25 through 31. That's not the text that we're going to hear because we're going to pick up after that. As those disciples come back to meet with the other disciples uh, and the apostles that are locked in a room, Jesus appears to them and he says to them, Peace be with you. And then it goes on. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So he's repeating himself. And here's this key word again, or this key phrase. And I want you to think about this. And, and bring this to prayer. And how is this speaking to you? Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I love that. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. That it was, thus it was written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day, and that the and, and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. I just love that. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I 
I start thinking about it as, I'm, as I'm right still now preparing for my homily about how I know in my life I have not been open to certain things. Now, op being open just to be open is not the goal. The goal is to be open to what is truth, what is beauty, what is right. Oh, my dog just saw a squirrel crossing across the, the property. Hey, Snickers! Come here, buddy. He's the dog patrol. Yes. Anyhow, to be open to the scriptures, being open to the truth, being open to beauty, it's not just being open to anything. But where have you, and I know for me, where have I been, that's the question I ask, been not open, not just to the scriptures, but to the truth of God in the world, or in how he's being called, or how I'm being called in his name. So this is just a, a, it's one of the stories I was going to tell at Mass, but I decided to delete it out because I think that would make it too long. But here's an example of me being closed and then opened. And maybe you can relate to this. I'd love to hear your stories. Feel free to write them in the comments below if you're, watch, if you're seeing this on the uh, Facebook channel. But when I was in college, I was a, a math education major, and I was taking one of the classes. I think it was like Math 241 or 341. It was called Linear Equations. It's not it, it actually Linear Algebraic Equations or Linear Algebra. Anyhow, it was an advanced algebra course, and I was having such a hard time not understanding, just not sure exactly what it was I was to do. And I had my book out, and I, I was just like looking through it, and I just couldn't understand it. And so I just kind of closed it, and I laid my head on it, thinking, oh gosh, it'd be great if I could just figure this out. And I took a nap. I took a power nap, you might say. Something happened. When I woke up, I, I got it. I understood it. All of a sudden, it just clicked. How is that? Now, sometimes we might say that's osmosis, like the information out of the book kind of like through osmosis came into my head and like, well, osmosis technically is water going through a membrane, but I, we all get the idea that somehow I was able to receive or understand this complex thing I couldn't before. Now, was I thinking about it more in my head? Oh, the squirrel's about to go. He's waiting on the fence. Snickers is watching. He's watching him go. And there goes Snickers. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Anyhow. So, I, I all of a sudden got it. I got how to do this particular set of I think it was like vector, advanced vector algebra. And I'd had this similar basic stuff in high school, but nothing at this level. And I was like, a revelation. I mean, was that a gift from God? Was it because I was thinking subconsciously? Or maybe even just, you know, like a lot of people, I too suffer sometimes from math anxiety. I'm a math teacher, former math teacher. And I think it's because of that I became a math teacher because I know what it's like for people to suffer from math anxiety. So there I was. Maybe just suffering from that. And then finally, I was calm and open to understand this truth about math. Now, we need to be open to the scriptures. Maybe that's something that, like reading, like for example, for me, reading is not a recreational thing. For I know my sister Anne, she loves to read. In fact, she is so good at reading. When she starts reading, she's oblivious to everything around her. You can even talk and she does, it doesn't bother her. For me, I'm like, squirrel, squirrel, like my dog. Like he's right over there just waiting for that squirrel to appear again. One little thing can just kind of get me deterred. In fact, as you've noticed in this video, the dog's deterrence or the dog's getting distracted by squirrels and me is making this difficult to understand probably, right? But this is something to pray for. To ask the Holy Spirit to give you and myself an openness and a thirst for the scriptures. It's important, the word of God is very important. It's the word of the living word of God. This is how, how do we come to know the truth? How do we op be open to beauty, truth? How do we be open to God? Well, the only way we really can know with any definitude is to know what God said. And we get that in the scriptures. The Catholic Church, our church also has the magisterium, and we are taught by the magisterium. But the magisterium, magisterium is taking the scriptures and helping us understand how these apply to us today. 
So as you come to Mass this weekend, think about that phrase, that Jesus opened their minds to the Scriptures. Where do I, where do you, need to open yourself up to something that God wants you to know? I hope this weekend you'll be primed for that, to be open so that when you receive the Eucharist, it'll come to you or you'll have an awareness or you'll have this new gift of desire, maybe for the scriptures or for whatever, that, whatever it is that God's calling you to do this week. God bless you, and I'll see you this weekend. Bye-bye. Hey, Snickers, come here. What are you looking for, buddy? Come here. Come on. Oh, here you go. Are you looking for the squirrel? Where's the squirrel? Bye.